Understanding how groundwater moves in southeast Minnesota is key to understanding how contaminants can enter groundwater. Most contaminants found in the region's streams, rivers, and drinking water are a result of human activity on the land surface. Some commonly detected contaminants include bacteria, pesticides, fertilizers, and chloride. These contaminants can enter aquifers where they might move at many different speeds and across great distances. One of the most mobile contaminants found in Minnesota groundwater is a form of nitrogen called nitrate. Although nitrate is an essential nutrient, excess sources primarily come from fertilizer, animal manure, and human waste. In southeast Minnesota, where the landscape is less populated, nitrate largely comes from cultivated cropland. Let's examine how nitrate can move into drinking water and surface water across three unique landscapes in southeast Minnesota. In the glacial till landscape, karst aquifers are present below the glacial sediments, but nitrate is less likely to reach these aquifers. This is because the thick layer of clay-rich glacial till acts like a barrier and provides some protection to deeply buried aquifers below. Additionally, most water soaking into the ground is captured by a network of drainage tile that flows directly to surface water ditches and streams. Although these factors create less risk to drinking water here, nitrate moves downstream in creeks and rivers to the karst and bluffland landscapes where it can move quickly into the bedrock and mix with groundwater. In karst, nitrate can travel to both surface water and drinking water by moving rapidly through shallow soils and into the underlying fractured bedrock. Unlike the till landscape, dense layers of clay are no longer present. This means that the soil's ability to naturally filter potential contaminants is reduced. Leaching, or downward movement of nitrate through the soil, is the primary way nitrate is lost to groundwater. Leaching occurs on all cropland acres throughout the region. Since nitrate dissolves in water, it follows the same path groundwater takes through the bedrock and can eventually end up in a drinking water well, spring, stream, or river. Although sinkholes are an important and visible feature in karst, they are a minor pathway for nitrate to enter groundwater. However, after a snowmelt or a heavy rain event, overland runoff into sinkholes can provide a direct connection for contaminants to enter groundwater and surface water. The movement of groundwater to drinking water wells and karst can be difficult to predict. But in general, layers of shale can help slow nitrate from reaching older, deeper groundwater. Results from drinking water monitoring in this landscape have shown that higher nitrate concentrations are usually highest in groundwater that's closer to the surface, while lower concentrations are found in deeper wells that pump groundwater from below protective shale layers. Although well depth is a key factor affecting nitrate risk to drinking water, well construction and maintenance is also important. Wells not properly maintained or constructed using modern well drilling techniques are more vulnerable to contamination. For instance, over time, well casing may corrode or crack allowing water to enter the well near the land surface before contaminants can be filtered out by the soil. Casing also plays an important role in determining which area of the aquifer a well draws water from. When comparing two wells at the same depth, the well with shorter casing may have much different water quality, even though they are right next to each other. Similarly, grouting is intended to fill any gaps between the casing and surrounding bedrock. A poorly grouted well may allow water from the land surface to run down the sides of the well casing and directly into the well. This can help explain why a deeper, poorly constructed well might have higher nitrate compared to a shallower, properly constructed well in the Bluffland Karst landscape, the upward flow of older and deeper regional groundwater affects the concentrations of nitrate. Older groundwater that can be several centuries old mixes with younger water that has higher nitrate. This mixing process reduces and dilutes nitrate in Bluffland streams and some aquifers. 
As it relates to drinking water, shallow wells are just as susceptible to nitrate contamination in the bluffland setting as in the karst landscape. Despite nitrate dilution from mixing of older groundwater, nitrate can still move to deeper aquifers, slowly increasing in concentration over time. Long-term water monitoring has shown that nitrate concentrations are increasing in groundwater flowing to bluffland streams. This rate of increase is about 3% per year. This does not necessarily mean that nitrogen sources from the land surface are increasing at this same rate, just that nitrate leached today, or yesterday, or 40 years ago, have not fully made their way into deeper groundwater. This delayed response, called lag time, is also occurring in some deeper drinking water wells, where nitrate concentrations are slowly increasing at a similar rate. Over the past several decades, communities in southeast Minnesota have taken important steps to protect groundwater. Many farmers are using more efficient management practices on cropland. Rural homeowners are sealing abandoned wells, fixing leaky septic systems, and landowners are keeping sinkholes free of trash. Despite these efforts, ensuring clean water for future generations will be an ongoing challenge, and additional efforts and focus will be needed to reach our clean water goals and standards. The next time you drive through the area, consider how easily actions at the land surface can impact groundwater. Then continue to think about what you can do to protect this vital resource for everyone to enjoy.